When somebody thinks about hunting the West, there's a few iconic species that definitely stand out. And on this week of the Best of the West, we're in Arizona with Logan Elson on an incredible early muzzleloader bull season. When somebody thinks about hunting elk out west, there's really two ways to go about it. You've got the early season where bugling is effective, the elk are rutting and making a lot more mistakes, and you've got the late season where bulls can be harder to find, they may be broken up or, or out in hiding trying to put back winter weight on before the big storms to, to recover from that rutting period of September and October. We were fortunate in this hunt, not only was it a, a resident hunt close to our homes where we could do a lot of scouting and spend a time looking, but we actually got the opportunity to hunt a bull that we had known about for a couple years. This bull was different. He had, he had a little cheater off of his G1 on his left side. He had an extra brow tine on the left side as well, which he broke off. Just good looking mass on the bottom end, long fronts. Dan and Logan had later called the Traveler, and everybody knows how difficult it is to try and track a specific bull on a hunt. But with the assistance of Logan's friends and family and the team from Diamond Outfitters, we were able to put something really special together. We were able to introduce him to our Best of the West muzzleloader, which is a revolutionary product in the muzzleloader industry. What we have out of the box is a legitimate seven, 800 yard muzzleloader, and Best of the West is revolutionary. When I drew the tag, I figured I'd be shooting 100 yards to 200 yards. And once we got an OK through Best of the West to film it, and I knew I'd be shooting a five, six, 700 yard muzzleloader, I knew it was going to be a game changer for my hunt. So the day of the Arizona draw, one of our lead guides, Dan Zellner, called me and said, hey, Logan's still calling us close friends and family, but we wanted you to know, do you think it's something that you'd be interested in helping guide and participate in? And I said, I'd be honored. When we're lucky enough like this, where one of our guides draws a premier tag, it's a full court press. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork so we could get active early in the process because we knew we were gonna be hunting giant screaming bulls in Arizona in the peak of the rut at yardage, and we couldn't wait. As soon as I found out I had the tag, me, all my buddies, all my family, we were searching high and low, never quit. We had two elk tags this year, me and my brother. This process for this hunt started years in advance when Dan and Logan had trail cameras in this area and started picking up some really large bulls. And what's special about this part of Arizona is big canyon country, not traditional elk habitat, and that's something that really played out over this episode. So we're hunting an area that's more like coos deer or mule deer country, a uh, lot of bear, a lot of mountain lion, a lot of predators, but not traditional elk habitat. When the first day of the hunt rolled around, Logan had a game plan. He knew exactly where he wanted us to be. He knew exactly where he wanted Dan to be. And I'll be darned if on the very first morning of the hunt, we weren't covered up in bulls. On the first day, we had a good group of guys out with us. We split off and we got a call saying that the shooter bull that we've been looking for is 450 yards underneath them. We thought, oh, we'll get up on a point and be right above him, get a shot. And when we came over, he's about 650 and just could not get set up on him where I was comfortable enough to take the shot that far and watched him walk over a ridge and he was gone. To sit and watch the bull you've been watching since May and had lost for so long, walk over a ridge opening morning after he was in range is really frustrating. It was about 94 degrees when we found him, and we knew by the time we had either driven a side-by-side -side or walked to our next spot to try and find him, he'd be bedded down for the day and it'd be over 100 degrees. So our morning was spent really making a plan for the afternoon.
we found Traveler as the sun was coming down. He was about a mile and a half in the opposite direction, so he was forcing us to travel quite a bit just to catch up to him. We knew day two, we'd have a different strategy to try and be in front of him instead of behind him. We made a pretty good plan for the second day of the hunt that really put boots on the ground at about eight different vantage points that would really concentrate on a two or three mile area. We were finding bulls initially as the sun came up, but we weren't finding Traveler. Traveler was so significantly larger than the other bulls that even though it was only a seven day hunt, it was only day two. We didn't want to start rushing into harvesting a bull just for the sake of making sure we got a bull down. We started hearing some bugles in the distance that we thought might set us up in position to be at Traveler's beck and call when the time was right. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Hunt and Fool, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. What was nice about day two and day three of our Arizona hunt was that Logan's family and friends could be there and even more so on Saturday and Sunday. And we really wanted to get this bull down while all those folks were in play, but we still wanted to target Traveler as our number one bull. We made a game plan to drop into a really remote basin, really steep, really thick. You're just sliding or rolling boulders off on yourself and going through brush that's way steep, if not taller. Just nasty, nasty country. We jokingly thought later that the only reason that bull went to that spot in that canyon was because he thought there would be no hunter stupid enough to go in there after him. And we knew this might be the only opportunity to harvest this bull while his dad and brother were there. And that weighed heavily on all of our minds. We went through a little saddle to get out onto a point of glass from and look up to my left and 400 yards away is the bull I'm looking for. Traveler, you could see by his body language, had had a long night. His head was down a little bit, he was tired. At times his tongue was hanging out. He was physically exhausted in that Arizona sun. And as we got in position, Traveler laid down. And he lay down in the most awkward, weird, unexplainable spot you could think of, like he was part desert bighorn sheep. After we found him, we decided to go through another little saddle and get on a little point to try and shoot across the canyon. So we're literally having to crawl on our hands and knees at some points through oak brush, trying to do anything we could to not get busted. Heard a bugle, looked down, and he was 365 yards away from us. Oh, he's up, he's up, he's up, okay. He's up and moving. The camera guy gave me his tripod to rest off of, and I got set up. I can't get steady. and of course muzzleloader smoke. Smoke everywhere. My spotter's covered in smoke. The camera guy's covered in smoke. And I'm pretty sure I miss. When you work hard and to get that one shot, that one opportunity, you might not get another one, and you blow it with a shot that should be easy for you, it, it feels terrible.
there he was, maybe 10 yards away from where I shot at him at, not spooked at all. Couldn't get another shot right there. He finally laid down, bedded in the shade, and we knew the pack out was gonna be brutal if it didn't happen soon. Got set up. This time I had the ability to be in a prone position. We had to rest at the front of the gun, at the back of the gun. My brother's giving me range every step he takes. I'm dialing in the Husqvarna to, to the range and getting ready for the shot. Got set up, this time in a prone position. We had to rest at the front of the gun, at the back of the gun. My brother's giving me range every step he takes. I'm dialing in the Husqvarna and getting ready for the shot. Did I hit him? Nothing, bud. Nothing at all. You th he's uh, it's he's hard to tell. It, we're, it looked like a good shot. Logan was confident in his shot. He's proned up really well. And the bull starts acting kind of goofy, you know? His head's kind of hanging. He's acting kind of sick. We're pretty sure Logan got him on that shot. Meantime, Logan's uh, about loading this muzzle over as quick as he can. Looks like a wild man over there. Oh, he's dead, he's dead. He, he just rolled over. Like, he, he's legs up. Yeah, he's legs up. Oh, Ty, thank you. We start looking across the canyon at where we have to go now and start thinking to ourselves, what did we just do? We got a big bull, we got to pack him a long ways up and down out of this canyon. It's gonna be hell to pack him out. We need everybody's help. Logan's dragging the horns through there. They're almost taller than he is. They probably weigh about as much too. So it was a rough go.
The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Hunt and Fool, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. For more information about hunting with Diamond Outfitters in Arizona, please call Dan at 520-730-8147 or online at www.diamondoutfitters.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. Did I hit him? After finding out that my daughter Autumn was drawn for an outstanding hunt in Arizona, I've been a huge fan of Best of the West. I've watched almost every episode for the last several years, and they put us in touch with Dan Adler from Diamond Outfitters. We have a very special treat in camp. 15-year-old Autumn Howe from Phoenix is joining us for the sixth year in a row on the Best of the West for chasing Arizona Screaming Giant. The anticipation of the hunt coming up was unbelievable. We're all so excited and we're so looking forward to the hunt can come soon enough. We made the hike with Autumn leading the charge, complete with cowgirl boots and orange nails with her Huskama 5x20 tactical scope and best of the West, 6.5, 284 by her side. We came out right there to the left. Hit, hit, hit. He's going left. That bull staggered at the shot, moved to the left about 15 to 20 yards and bedded down. We knew he was hit hard. Down. He just tipped down. over out him. He's dead. He's not dead. He's just laid down. He's flopping over. Everything was perfect. It was like a perfect dream. Things could not have been better from beginning to end. Super excited to run down there and join Autumn and Vince to see this beautiful Arizona elk. I want to thank my dad for putting me in for this amazing tag and hooking me up with Best of the West and Diamond Outfitters of Arizona. I want to thank Diamond Outfitters and all the guys that work with Dan. There is no better people, no better team. 